So following all the different toy shots that we had for the deluxe Kino Dremecha that's coming out here pretty soon, we now have a ton of pictures for all of the other first quarter stuff from figures to the changer to the weapons and today I'm going to talk about all of it here as kind of a update video to the last Kino Drew video that I only posted a couple of days ago. We're breaking the upload streak thing again or we're breaking the upload schedules more specifically to have an upload streak because there's just been so much Toku news this week from Power Rangers and Sentai and everything so you're getting a Sunday video this week which is not going to be a very common thing but let's talk about Kino Drew toy pictures. All right, so jumping right into it here, we don't have like a ton of stuff here to talk about, but some pretty cool stuff nonetheless. So let's go ahead and start with the changer for Kinoger, which is the Deluxe Oger Caliber. So I really do like the look of this thing. We've had a ton of different jokes and comparisons about what other things this thing looks like. Uh, basically, it's, in my opinion, it's three different things that a lot of people have said all put together because they're completely accurate. It is the Seiken from Kamarada Saber, mixed with the Perfect Exector from Kamarada Kabuto, with the functionality of a bop it. So that, that's what this is. I mean, there's really like no denying that it looks pretty much virtually identical to that. In fact, it even looks like it could fit into a sword driver. It looks like it would be a Seiken from Kamarada Saber, but I do like it. I'm not buying it. So I said that on Twitter and a lot of people kept joking about, okay, yeah, sure, well, can't wait for the review and stuff like that. And here's the deal. Genuinely, I'm not buying it, but if I was to buy it, I would wait a year from now to when we inevitably get a memorial edition for this thing. Because while it does have a decent size to it, I think it's like close to 20 something inches, which isn't completely terrible. I mean, we've had definitely shorter and dinkier toys in both Saber. I think actually those ones are pretty dinky, but we just have them in general for Sentai and Rider. So, like, I've come to expect that. But like, since this is probably an inevitability to get a Memorial Edition, since Kira Major, Zenkaiger, and we know Don Brothers are all getting Memorial versions of their changers, there's no reason to believe that this one wouldn't either, and if you can wait a year, maybe wait a year. However, it is a pretty cool functionality, basically everybody uses this one sword, but depending on like what lever your thing you twist or turn, which is where the bop kind of similarities come from, that's what transforms them into the different Ogres on the team. There was the Bandai Mania demo video already out there, which we got to hear a little bit of the sounds, or a pretty good amount of the sounds actually, so I'm not going to play all that stuff there for like copyright reasons and stuff like that, but you've probably seen a little bit of clips, maybe I'll play like one voice phrase like right now. But besides that, if you want to see all the different functionalities of this toy, of this changer, there will be the Bandai Mania video linked in the description below, so you can check all that out. But you have a very pretty sword, many different colors, it looks pretty cool, I like the you are the king, you are the king, you know, like, <laughs> I think that's a fun thing, I like that kind of stuff, you know, silly toys that just say random English phrases for tokusatsu are always a very interesting and silly thing to see, and this is no difference, it's great. Now to go with it, you have the Deluxe King's Weapon, uh, which we saw in the different Telebukun scans. This is very similar to Q the Weapon from Q Ranger, where it can become something different for each member of the team. I think it works decently well, we can see the five different modes here. Red gets another sword, purple gets like an arrow slash bow gun kind of thing, yellow gets a sickle, black gets kind of a gun blaster thing, it's kind of like a steiner kind of thing almost, or a claw, and then blue kind of just gets like a blaster or a gun kind of thing like that, so I said kind of thing like so many different times there, but it's obviously weird ways of making these weapons look like what they're supposed to be making, but which is how these things kind of always go, but this is no exception. You'll be able to actually combine it with the changer and make like one big Naginata weapon, which that's pretty cool. I like whenever we get two swords and then you can connect them. We see that also pretty commonly in Tokusatsu when you have one member of a team or something that has two different swords. A lot of times you can combine them into a Naginata form and this works perfectly good for me there, so that's pretty sweet. So obviously these are sold separately, uh, but you know, they have functionality with each other if you get them. There's no gimmicks this year, so there's like nothing that comes with any of these weapons or anything that you need. So right out of the box, the changer is ready to go. You just bop it the correct direction and you become the Ojo that you want to do, which is great. Now, of course, we're getting our typical Sentai buckle, which is the Deluxe Keen's Hotline and Ojo Holder Set. So this is going to have a holster for the changer onto the side. So it's one of those kind of things where the it's just a buckle that doesn't really do anything. And in a season that we don't have gimmicks for, it's very, I wouldn't say lacking, but it's very unnecessary, but it becomes a phone because of course it becomes a phone. So the initial description for this thing said that it looked like the Tokuja buckle, and it definitely does look like the Tokuja buckle, except for where that one was like a train pass or a train pass holder. 
this is just a toy cell phone because of course so I, honestly I, at this point every single toy smartphone for toku looks exactly the same to me uh whether it's sentai or it's rider ever since they've moved from like the flip phone style phones to smartphone style phones for these toys they all look the exact same and they keep making them they're gonna get used like two or three times i they must sell them if they keep making them for toku properties all of the time i mean rider does it a lot more than sentai does it of course but we're doing this now we have a belt buckle that's a phone i don't think we've done that before uh, because usually it's like common rider bikes that become phones and sentai doesn't really do that kind of thing so it's interesting i like the design of it it's basically just a cool novelty thing and basically if you want a holster for the changer that's that's really what it is when it comes down to it and it's probably going to be pretty skippable for most people i would imagine but then the final thing to talk about is this year's action figure line so we knew we were getting action figures again just like we had with senkaiger and that we had with don brothers where they had that change hero line that lasted for two years and while this is no longer going to be called change heroes they virtually seem to be the exact same figures as Chain Heroes. Down to the box, it says Action Hero now, but the logo is very reminiscent of the Chain Hero logo that we saw on the Don Brothers packaging. So it's the same kind of price point and everything. Same kind. Of, I'm sure the pegs are, are even going to be the same. So if you're worried about them like not scaling and stuff like that, I wouldn't be. These seem to be virtually the same molds and stuff like that for the third year in a row which is a good thing. I think those figures were fun and good, especially with the paint applications, especially how they scaled with the Candy Toy Yuta figures, because typically the Candy Toy Yuta figures for both of those seasons gave you more characters that these, that the mainline painted figures were never going to give you. And I'm sure we're gonna get that same kind of thing here. We already have a listing out there for the Yuta set. So we know we're getting Yuta Kinoja figures if you don't wanna get these or if you wanna get those because they'll probably have you know more detail with the stickers and stuff like that. But the first release here is the Action Hero Kuagata Ojir and King Speeder set. So this is of course our red member of the team, our leader of the team who has this Kuagata like, it's kind of a motorcycle. It's kind of more like a hover bike thing that's themed after a Kuagata Beetle. It looks pretty sick. I do like it. The packaging is absolutely gorgeous. I love Kuwagata Ojir on the side there. And the figure looks pretty solid. I mean, the thing is, these suits are pretty barren and empty, which is something that people, a lot of people complain about with them. So there's really not much that they like couldn't paint on here. So I'm kind of 50-50 on like, if I'm going to get the Yudo or if I'm going to get these. These are the only things that I actually would be tempted to get for Kinojir. Because uh, basically, as I've said many times in other Kinojir videos, because of Power Rangers' 30th anniversary and other expenses I need to take care of, I am not collecting Kinojir stuff primarily at all. So if you're expecting any reviews of the stuff on the channel, unfortunately, I'm not going to be doing that. However, whether I get these Action Hero figures or I get the Yudos, I'm not sure which way I'm going to go yet. I am going to get action figures for this team. And of course, we have the other four members of the team, which are all being sold separately in very similar packaging as to the Change Hero ones. So if you have any of those, I'm sure you know exactly what you're expecting with these. However, Red is only sold with his bike or speeder thing. So if you wanted to get him without it, there doesn't seem to be an option for that just yet or at all. So I'm curious because I'm not sure if Yudo would make this bike. So you might want to just wait to get Yudo Kuwagata Ojir because he wouldn't come with a bike, but I don't even know if they're going to do the bike there. So it's kind of those weird things to where I'm 50-50 on if Yudo is going to do it or if this is going to be exclusive to Chain Hero. It might be, or Action Hero. It might be exclusive to Action Hero. That wouldn't surprise me, but that's where Yudo will kind of be another benefit to here if, is if you don't want this bike, you can wait a couple months for Yudo and get a Kuwagata Ojir without this bike if you didn't want it for some reason. So all the change here figures are going to retail except for the bike one for the same price which is 1980 yen the bike set is 3850 yen and then our final thing to talk about here is the typical sentai hero series vinyls although they're not the typical vinyls uh, because i talked about in my big toy listing video back in december they are shrinking the vinyls down to the size of the comrader ones uh, which were shrunk down this year to be the size of the ultraman ones so if you have any of the ultra hero series or you have any of the new brand new comrader geats vinyl figures you know what size these are going to be. They're going to be 770 yen a piece. And if you want a better comparison for what to expect with them, I've done a whole video on that Commodore Geats vinyl series, which is popping up on the channel here somewhere. So you can check that out if you kind of want to know what to expect with these. And speaking of prices for everything else, the Deluxe Osier Caliber Changer is going to be 7,150 yen. 
The Deluxe King's weapon is going to be 5,500 yen. The Deluxe King's hotline and Ojir holder set is going to be 2,750 yen. And then finally, if you want to get all three of those Deluxe toys together, there will be one big combo set for 15,400 yen. And every single thing that I talk about here today is going to be released on March 4th, the same day as Deluxe King Ojir. And of course, the, well, the same, yeah, I was going to say the same day the show starts, but it's like the same weekend that the show starts and the same day that all the other stuff that we talked about in the last video is really so that's pretty much it that's everything for as far as we know for the most part uh, for King Nodri's first quarter catalog of stuff there might be like some other random stuff in April or something like that but this is the primary bulk of it I'm sure actually there is more stuff because there is listings that talked about to like other auxiliary mechas that we're going to get in April and stuff like that but this is like 80 85 percent of the stuff we're going to get until we get six ranger stuff in like May and June that kind of thing for quarter two and we don't even have listings for quarter two yet so that's it. So that's all the Keynote stuff we can expect at the very beginning of the show. As of right now, there's no pre-orders for this stuff up just yet, but whenever there is, which should be the weekend that you're seeing this video, I'm recording this video on Friday and you're seeing it on Sunday. So at this point, there probably should be some pre-order links. So I'll be including some Amazon Japan ones down in the description below, as well as HLJ ones, which if you use the HLJ ones, uh, using my affiliate links, that helps out the channel. So that's always appreciated if you want to use those ones. And that's all we got. So that's going to do it for Kinoja stuff. Like I said, if you want to check out the whole video where I covered the deluxe Kinoja mecha, check that out. And if you want to check out my initial reaction to the suits from December, we have that video as well. So we have a couple different videos of Kinoja content, which will be linked all in the playlist at the end card of this video. And that's going to do it. So let me know down in the comments below. What do you think of the new toy pictures for the rest of the deluxe Kinoja stuff? Are you picking up all this stuff? What stuff are you not going to get? What things do you want to get? All that kind of stuff down in the comments below. I want to hear about it. And until next time, you guys can follow me on Twitter. I live your Ranger Key, our landing fake PR, and I'll see you all later. To wrap up this video, I'd like to thank my $5 and above patrons, Jurassic Samurai, Macket Alchemist, Robert Browning, Static Thunder, Brendan Overland, Maji Yellow, Redstone MCPC, Comics 1017, James Darty, Monster Rocket, John Luke, Eric Berry, Tyler Bozetsky, Matthew Thorne, Josh Landry, and Pyramidus. You can support Toku Topics for as little as $1 a month on my Patreon, link in the description below.